Ladies and gentlemen, today we are tasked with answering one simple question. What's better, a gaming laptop or a gaming desktop? And this has actually been inspired by the fact that we have an RTX 4060 equipped laptop GPU, whereas over here we have an RTX 4060 desktop. So I'm really keen to see all of the differences in terms of performance, maybe noise levels, acoustics, price, performance, but then of course, most importantly of all, how they actually play. Are both of these good? And is one significantly better than the other? All that's left to say is an absolute massive thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. If you do want to check out current pricing on loads of different laptops, and of course our PC components, you can find those linked down below with our Best Buy links. Let's kick things off then by discussing everything gaming laptop, and this is the Lenovo Slim 5. This was one that was actually provided by Lenovo for a sponsored video a couple of weeks ago, but this is one I personally use. I really like this because it's a nice or sort of sturdy frame, it's got a high refresh rate 1440p screen, and then it does have that RTX 4060. But obviously there are loads of different gaming laptops with loads of different specifications, but crucially they all share the same advantages and disadvantages really versus the desktop. And obviously the main advantage of going for something like this is portability. I mean this actually isn't a particularly big desktop, this is one of the smaller cases you can get in one of the smaller systems, but you're gonna have to lug a monitor around with you, there's no battery. This is a proper portable machine and you can take this with you anywhere that you want and assuming you're connected to a power outlet because of course gaming laptops still need a lot of power to run those graphics chips and to run at the full frame rate then you will be able to have a gaming battle station on the go. Doesn't matter what you think of desktop this is always going to be better for that. The other thing about gaming laptops that's pretty cool these days is just the raw performance of these because again they've come on leaps and bounds versus the laptops of the previous generation and the generation before that. I mean, I don't think the performance level is going to blow you away in terms of ray tracing quality unless you buy the very best, but still, the fact that you can do it on a portable machine is still very impressive. Not only that, but I'd also argue you're almost less likely to see CPU bottlenecking these days on laptops, not because it's not going to happen, but because the CPUs themselves are more powerful, but then also because you can get screens like this that are higher resolution, so this one is actually 2560 by 1600 because it's a 16 by 10 display, that means if you do run into this situation, well, you can just crank up the resolution and get better visuals and not have to worry about your CPU holding you back. It is still going to happen in a fair few games, certainly on some lower end laptops or ones that may be slightly misconfigured with like a higher end GPU and a lower end CPU. But generally speaking, I'm actually pretty pleased with the results these days. I also want to shout out that gaming laptops these days are pretty upgradable as it's very simple to swap out the RAM for something higher speed or more importantly, really adding extra storage thanks to the use of M.2 drives. So yeah. Gaming laptops have certainly come on a long way in the last few years, and actually I think if it's been like a decade or so since you bought yourself a gaming laptop, you will be so pleasantly surprised with the difference versus what you can get now. I mean it's pretty fantastic when you look at it really. But 99% of my personal gaming is done on a desktop, and I would strongly advise that if you're watching this video, you don't need portability, that you do strongly consider getting a desktop for a number of reasons. First one is actually price. I mean, this cost about £900 at the time of filming-ish to build, whereas this exact Intel laptop would be about £1,400. But there is a very good sale at the moment on Best Buy. You can get the Ryzen version of this. But obviously, the other thing really is it's just all about flexibility. I mean, you might be watching this and you think, I really don't like the look of this. I would get a completely different case. Well, guess what? You can do that. It's so customizable that you can put whatever you want in it. And then on that note, you can also upgrade it because obviously while you can add new SSDs and RAM to this, it's still going to be quite limiting in terms of like five years time. Whereas most people keep their power supply for like a decade or so and then just keep swapping out the CPU until the motherboard won't accept a new one. And obviously graphics, pretty much the same. You'd be able to upgrade this for the next five years easily and you could just like sell your old one, swap it out, upgrade it, and then you're getting a much cheaper upgrade to get more performance if you say grab a new gaming monitor. Of course though, I suppose that is an advantage of our gaming laptop. It's a complete one box solution. You don't need to have any knowledge. You literally just take it out of the box, turn it on, and then start installing all of your stuff. But you could also argue that if you went for a pre-built PC, then you'd be getting a very similar experience. I think the main thing to note is that regardless of whether you do go for a laptop or you do go for the desktop, please make sure you brush up on your PC components so you know exactly what you're buying and how many FPS it's going to give you in your chosen game. You can find this in the top right corner of your screen if you want to learn all about it from one of my videos. But anyway, enough talk. You probably know all of this already. So let's jump into the bit that actually matters, the gaming performance. And this means we will need a monitor. 
which is of course extra cost if you do go for a desktop or the laptop, it's all baked in. Rightio then folks, here we are all set up and ready to go. And we're gonna start with Returnal because this has a baked in benchmark, but I just want to illustrate here we have the exact same game running on our laptop versus our desktop. So let's have a look then to see if we can see any core differences between the two. Again, this is running at 1440p, exact same settings across the board. And our utilization is very similar. It might be slightly higher on that GPU on the laptop, but there's not huge amounts of differences. There's quite a lot of fluctuations between the two, but it does look as if our desktop is actually winning in terms of FPS at the moment. But here we are, the numbers are in, and it does indeed appear as if the desktop has been victorious. 80 frames a second versus 70. So yeah, that's a bit over 10% actually, isn't it? I will say that actually you are likely to get a slightly better result at home because we're recording, and I noticed that the frame rate does drop a little bit more on the laptop than it does on the desktop, but this is a completely fair test. We're using NVIDIA Shadow Play for both. But let's see if we get a slightly different result by changing the DLSS from balance to quality, changing the resolution to 1080p, and all importantly, removing the ray tracing entirely. While that is running, by the way, I do also want to draw your attention to one of the main differences really between desktop and laptop, and that is the acoustics when you're actually running games in them. So I'll just pop this monitor down for a second and then listen to this. Basically no noise, the 4060 on the desktop, really power efficient, loads of fans, loads of thermal dissipation, great. Whereas this, for clarity, is actually a very good gaming laptop in terms of acoustics, but there's no contest. This is way louder than our desktop. Here we are once again, numbers are in, 110 over on the desktop, 98 on the laptop. So again, it's pretty similar really, about 10% extra performance over on the desktop whilst making a lot less noise. It does seem that we're pretty evenly matched though. I mean, 96% GPU bound, so only 4% of the time are you seeing problems from the CPU here, whereas over on this system it is 2%. But of course you could upgrade the CPU in this very easily if you wanted to get more performance, whereas with the laptop, not so much. Oh, but PC-centric, no one plays Returnal. Well, you should but here's something you might be playing instead then. How about some Starfield? And this is running at 1440p in windowed on both. Now, of course, bearing in mind this isn't a built-in benchmark, you can't do a complete apples to apples comparison, but this is pretty much as good as we can do. I mean, I would say you do want to turn some of the settings down here a little bit because both of these are running on high refresh screens and I think you can get a little bit more for your money. Interestingly though, there doesn't seem to be a huge difference in terms of the raw numbers. Now, obviously changing DLSS means that the resolution is still going to be quite similar between these two but I probably would expect to have seen a little bit more so it's interesting how this has worked out so maybe they're doing a similar job hmm but actually there is one more test we can do which is what you're seeing now and this is with frame generation enabled which is an Nvidia feature on the latest 40 series of GPUs. I mean, the frame rate is definitely increased on both, but actually the thing I didn't expect to see was the difference in latency. Because of course with DLSS 3 frame generation, it essentially adds an extra AI generated frame between rendered frames. And this does increase your latency, but in a single player game, it shouldn't really matter as long as your latency is below 60. And I would say that both of these pass the test because well, they're both under 60, but this one, the laptop, actually has much higher latency than the desktop, despite the frame rates not being drastically different. That's fascinating, actually. We're getting about 45 milliseconds of latency to around about 56 milliseconds of latency on the laptop. I also want to do a quick test of the most demanding game that we have in at the moment, which is Alan Wake 2. The game looks good. This is running with DLSS set to balanced. You could turn this up a little bit if you wanted to, but as we're currently getting around about 60 FPS, this is probably where it's going to want to be. Swapping over to our desktop 4060 meanwhile, and I promise I am not fiddling with these numbers, but you will see we're once again getting roughly about 10 FPS more, which is kind of funny really when you think about it. But clearly this is quite consistent on the sort of triple eight games that we've been testing that have been running at around about 60, 70 frames a second. So I guess it's not actually that surprising. Yeah, it's definitely nice to have this extra level of performance. Well then everybody, certainly some very interesting numbers there. I mean, for me, I was absolutely fascinated with the fact that these two were not only so close, 
but that you could actually run Returnal on this with ray tracing at good frame rates without the whole thing sort of toppling over. I mean, yes, Alan Wake 2, not really so much, but then again, path tracing on pretty much any GPU, bar, you know, like the top end ones, is going to be uh, pretty problematic. I'm impressed that both of these two are so close together and this does sort of solidify the fact that if you do need portability then don't be put off from buying a gaming laptop. That's not what I'm trying to do here at all. I'm trying to sh clearly sort of show you the differences and if you are going for a portable machine you're going to accept that there will be a bit of a compromise and I like to think that actually this should reaffirm you in that you're going to get a quality product but it does definitely depend on what you buy I mean I don't want this to specifically be about this there are loads of good laptops out there but likewise there are loads of ones that frankly suck if you don't need the portability this is really the main point I want to make if you don't need it please go for a gaming desktop because for the same sort of money you could buy a full setup, larger screen, maybe even a better monitor, upgrade the GPU, the CPU, so many different things you can do for a very similar price point and you will be getting a better overall experience. I mean, yes, it's not as portable, but you could go for like an ITX rig if you did want that. And if you do need a screen that you can take with you to Starbucks, then you probably wouldn't be considering this in the first place. So if you are choosing between the two and you're going to use this solely at one location, then please look at a gaming desktop because they are better. But as I say, it is really nice to see that these two are actually a little bit closer than I thought they would. Let me know your thoughts on this though. Do you agree with me that the desktop is clearly better or are there are loads of things I've missed that will put you over to Team Laptop? Let us know down in the comment section below. Give us some recommendations. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. It really does help out. Get yourself subscribed. And of course, if you do want to check out anything featured in this video, including that deal on the Ryzen version of this laptop, then you can find those lists down below with our Best Buy links. But thank you so much for watching this video. We will catch you in the next one.